National Strength and Conditioning Association Personal Trainer Exam Prep Series. Question 1. What is the correct order of structures of a muscle from smallest to largest? A. Muscle fiber, endomesum, fascicles, perimesum, epimesum. B. Muscle fiber, epimesum, fascicles, perimesum, endomesum. C. Muscle fiber, endomesum, perimesum, fascicles, epimesum. D. Muscle fiber, epimesum, endomesum, fascicles, perimesum. Correct answer. A. The correct order of structures of a muscle from smallest to largest is muscle fiber, endomesum, fascicles, perimesum, epimesum. Question 2. What part within the muscle fiber stores glycogen and myoglobin and is made up of lipids, enzymes, and various types of cellular organelles? A. Sarcoma. B. Sarcoplasm. C. Transverse tubules. D. Myofibrils. Correct answer. B. The sarcoplasm stores glycogen and myoglobin and is made up of lipids, enzymes and cellular organelles. It is comparable to the cytoplasm in other cells, but has more specific functions. The stored glycogen is a source of energy, and the myoglobin is used for oxygen binding. Question 3. What is the function of calcium in the muscle stimulation process? A provides the action potential b binds with troponin to open up binding sites c binds to act in filaments binding sites d conducts the electrical impulse along the myofibril correct answer b during muscle stimulation calcium binds with troponin which subsequently shifts the tropomyosin off the binding sites, freeing them up for the myosin cross bridges to attach themselves. Question 4. What controls the process of changing membrane potential on the nerve cell membrane by allowing sodium ions to rush into the cell? A. Depolarization. B. Hyperpolarization. C. Sodium potassium pump. D. Saltatory conduction. Correct answer. C. The sodium potassium pump controls the process of changing membrane potential on the nerve cell membrane by allowing sodium ions to rush into the cell. This causes a dramatic change in voltage, which in turn causes an action potential to be conducted along the length of the axon. Question 5. What relays information to the central nervous system about changes in the body and limbs positions due to muscular motions? A. Proprioceptors. B. Nerve cells. C. Muscle spindles. D. Motor end plates. Correct answer. A. Proprioceptors relay information to the central nervous system about changes in the body and limbs positions due to muscular motions. They are specialized to help maintain balance and posture and are found in the muscles, tendons and joints. Question 6. Which part of the muscle fiber senses changes in the tension of the muscle? A. Pacinian corpuscles. B. Neurotransmitters. C. Muscle spindles. D. Golgi tendon organs. Correct answer. D. The Golgi tendon organ sense changes in the tension of the muscle. When activated, they send messages that indicate that the muscle is about to engage in dangerous action resulting from extreme tension. Question 7. 
What type of tissue has a form called serous, which is fluid-filled? A. Osseous B. Tendons C. Collagen D. Fascia Correct answer. D. Fascia is the tissue that has a form called serous, which is fluid-filled. This type of fascia makes up protective membranes that cover the internal viscera. Other types of fascia that do not have specific names relating to their functions are superficial and deep fascia. Question 8. Which organ system is responsible for transport of nutrients, removal of waste and overall environmental maintenance to support the body's function? A. Endocrine B. Cardiovascular C. Respiratory D. Reproductive Correct answer. B. The cardiovascular system is responsible for transport of nutrients, removal of waste and overall environmental maintenance to support the body's function. Question 9. Which components of an electrocardiogram represent the electrical stimulus as it passes through the atrial and ventricular myocardium? A. Q and T waves. B. P and Q waves. C. QRS complex and T wave. D. QRS complex and P wave. Correct answer. D. The QRS complex and P wave represent the electrical stimulus as it passes through the atrial and ventricular myocardium. The P wave shows atrial depolarization and the QRS complex shows ventricular depolarization. Question 10. When would it not be abnormal to observe a systolic pressure measurement of 220 to 260? A. During aerobic exercise. B. During the Valsalva maneuver. C. During low-intensity work in hot temperatures. D during low-intensity work in cold temperatures. Correct answer. A. A systolic pressure measurement of 220 to 260 would be expected during aerobic exercise. The diastolic pressure, though, would likely remain the same as while at rest, or even decrease slightly. Question 11. Which of the following is not a part of the body's respiratory center? A. Dorsal group. B. Ventral group. C. Pneumotaxic group. D. Alveolar group. Correct answer. D. There is no alveolar group in the body's respiratory center. The dorsal. Ventral and pneumotaxic respiratory groups are groups of neurons in the pons and medulla oblongata, the lower portion of the brain stem, which control the rate of ventilation. Question 12. What term describes the total process of the breakdown of food molecules to release energy and the subsequent use of that energy to build up new molecules within the body? A. Metabolic. B. Anabolic. C. Catabolic. D. Myabolic. Correct answer. A. Metabolic describes the total process of the breakdown of food molecules to release energy and the subsequent use of that energy to build up new molecules within the body. It is the combined process of catabolic and anabolic functions. Question 13. Which of the following is not true about lactic acid? A. It is the end product of fast glycolysis during reduced oxygen availability. B. It causes an artificial sense of energy in muscles during exercise. C. It is converted to lactate in the blood and muscles. 
d. Its conversion to lactate and subsequent clearing out of the blood by oxidation is an indication of ability to recover. Correct answer, b. Lactic acid does not cause an artificial sense of energy in muscles during exercise, rather, it is responsible for feelings of muscular fatigue. Question, 14. What is the term for the oxygen uptake that is maintained to restore the body to pre-exercise condition? A. Oxygen debt. B. Oxygen deficit. C. Oxygen consumption. D. Oxygen elevation. Correct answer. A. Oxygen debt, also called excess post-exercise oxygen consumption, EPOC, is the oxygen uptake that is maintained to restore the body to pre-exercise condition. This oxygen uptake is higher than resting value and is related to the duration and intensity of the exercise performed. Question, 15. Which of the following factors affects the ability to determine actual work done during resistance training? A. Body weight of participant. B. Energy level of participant prior to commencing the set. C. Angle of weight movement during the exercise. D. Mass of the weight used relative to participant's body's weight. Correct answer, C. The angle of weight movement during the exercise affects the ability to determine actual work done during resistance training. If the weight is moving along an angle, there would be additional calculation required to determine resistance factors, such as friction. Question, 16. Which type of muscle arrangement resembles the layout of a feather, with angled fibers? A. Radiate. B. Fusiform. C. Pennate. D. Longitudinal. Correct answer. C. Pennate muscles arrangement resembles the layout of a feather, with angled fibers. An advantage to this layout is that it allows for reduced inertial resistance. Question 17. Which of the following correctly indicates the two factors that make up fluid resistance? A. Surface drag and form drag. B. Form drag and friction. C. Friction and bracketing. D. Liquid and gas. Correct answer. A. Surface drag and form drag are the two factors that make up fluid resistance. Surface drag is caused by the action of friction on the surface of the object, and form drag is from the molecules pressing against the object as it moves through the fluid. Question 18. All of the following are factors that affect adaptations to resistance training except A. Specificity B. Diet C. H. D. Genetics. Correct answer. B. Diet is not a factor that affects adaptations to resistance training. While it clearly will affect the ability to perform, especially over the long term, it does not directly impact the associated adaptations. Question 19. Which of the following changes in the body's relationship to insulin could greatly affect the status of a diabetic's health as aging occurs? A. Increased sensitivity to insulin due to long-term aerobic training. B. Decreased sensitivity to insulin due to long-term aerobic training. C. Greater rate of insulin secretion. D. Increased cooperation between insulin and other hormones within the endocrine system. Correct answer. A. 
Increased sensitivity to insulin due to long-term aerobic training could greatly affect the status of a diabetic's health as aging occurs. This increased sensitivity as an adaptation to exercise will help to counteract naturally decreasing insulin sensitivity that occurs with age. Question 20. What is the most commonly recommended daily intake of carbohydrates for non-performance individuals? A. 1520 grams per kilogram of body weight. B. 810 grams per kilogram of body weight. C. 56 grams per kilogram of body weight. D. 23 grams per kilogram of body weight. Correct answer. C. The most commonly recommended daily intake of carbohydrates for non performance individuals is 5 6 grams per kilogram of body weight. Without enough carbs in the diet, ketones may build up in the blood, causing ketosis due to incomplete breakdown of fats. Question 21 What is the recommended dietary allowance for male and female adults for calcium in milligrams per day? A. 500 B. 800 C. 1000 D. 2000 Correct answer. C. The recommended dietary allowance for male and female adults for calcium, in milligrams per day, is 1000. The upper limit is 2500. Question 22. What is it called when the body experiences a relaxing effect due to a cascade of certain events catalyzed by exercise? A. Thermodynamic effect. B. Thermogenic effect. C. Calming effect. D. Tryptophan effect. Correct answer. B. When the body experiences a relaxing effect due to a cascade of certain events catalyzed by exercise, this is called the thermogenic effect. The overall effect is a reduced amount of afferent stimulation to the brain and resultant relaxation. Question 23. Which of the following is not advisable for effective goal setting with a fitness client? A. Goals need to be rigid and fixed in order to be able to effectively measure their success. B. Check to see if the client feels like the goals are successfully being met. C. Prioritize the client's goals by choosing three to focus on first. D. Determine what short-term steps are necessary to accomplish long-term goals. Correct answer. A. It is not advisable to make goals rigid and fixed when working with a fitness client. Rather, they should be flexible enough to adjust them in action, expectation and time to help the client ultimately meet the goal. Question 24. What has the most impact on raising a client's self-efficacy? A. Achieving success. B. Meeting milestones. C. Competing against peers. D. Feel overall improved health. Correct answer. A. Achieving success has the most impact on raising a client's self-efficacy. This may be measured in many ways, such as decreased weight, decreased body fat or better fitting clothes. The feeling of success will be very personal to each client. Question 25. What risk factor for coronary artery disease results in vascular injury and increased vascular wall stress? A. Hypercholesterolemia. B. Hypertension. C. Cigarette smoking. D. Obesity. Correct answer. B. Hypertension is the risk factor for coronary artery disease which results in vascular injury and increased vascular wall stress. 
the overall effect increases the heart's workload in pumping blood through the body's vasculature. Thank you to everyone for subscribing, rating, faving, and commenting my video and channel.